Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is day 17 of the RPG a Day 2019 challenge. Today's word is one. Which I think is a perfect time to delve a little bit further into something I've hinted at in some of my reviews, but haven't outright stated. That being a push for unification. I kind of hinted at this when I talked about earlier editions of D&D and their design philosophy versus later editions. But there's but unification involves a singular core mechanic for die rolling that everything else is built around. Whereas if you look at something like AD&D, you have these segmented series of subsystems. You have, a sub, you have a subsystem for the thief skill rules. You have a subsystem for the for turning. You have a sub you have a subsystem for your for normal attacks. You've got you've got Thaco. You've got normal skill checks. Some some of the some of the times you're rolling high. Other times you're rolling low. And when third edition came around, there was an effort to try and codify all those subsystems into one unified whole. The D as as we all know, as the D20 system. Now, I am very, very much uh, summarizing a lot of that, but that's the general vibe that I've always, ha I've always had between second and third. It's, this is also why I was so harsh on a game like Strike, because of the fact that it is veering away from, it was veering away from that sort of unification without giving a concrete reason as to it. Strike is effectively two RPGs kitbashed into one. The reason why a lot of people end up going with this whole one unified thing is that it becomes much easier to balance, in my opinion, and much easier to introduce and tweak with things without having to worry too much if you're causing some domino effect problem later. You can still create that, there's still the power creep problem that D&D has struggled with over the years, but it is something that can be at least mitigated to a certain degree. And I know it might seem hypocritical for me to be so harsh on Strike, strike when I was not so harsh on Anima, but the key difference is that for all of its different subsystems when it comes to, when it comes to abilities, all of it is still using Anima's D100 mechanic. Yes, there was also the, D, the roll under D10 mechanic, but the changes to exit pretty much rendered that irrelevant. The only issue there is, ro is rolling D10 versus D100, and that's something that can be easily addressed. But I think the whole unified system can be taken a bit further, and there are two games I want to... Well, actually, not two games, I tell a lie. Three games I want to focus on when it comes to this unified mechanic. The first is what's known as the Omni System, or as I've often called it, D20 Pure, which I first was, in, was exposed to through, Atl through Atlantis Second Age, which in of itself is a pretty good game. It does have an appearance of some aspects of the D20 system, but the thing is, it is not using the D20 system as you might be familiar with it. It is use the only die that ever gets real use is the 20-sided die. There is a kind of bonus table that it relies on, but you're not rolling anything else. If it, You're either rolling a D20 or you're rolling nothing at all. The other, and I suppose this would be the more tempting one to talk about given the name of the name for the day, is the One Roll Engine, which is a very interesting use of, gri of grid work. The only real problem that I have with the Run Roll Engine, and I'll probably get into more detail on this when I get to Godlike, is that by relying on groups of results as it does, you can end up in a situation where things get a little bit too swingy. This is, some, this is something that Weapons of the Gods and its successor, Legends of the Wulin, addressed by having a river system where you could store away dice that you weren't going to use but might use in a later roll. Say, for instance, if you roll if you rolled um, three fives, but you were but um, you also rolled the two eights. 
you could store one of those eights and use it again if you ended up getting a bunch of eights on a different roll. I think it's a good way to help keep this swing problem to a minimum. Because rolling in groups is a little bit too depend is a little bit too dependent on RNG for my liking. That's also the reason why a lot of people really did not care for the dice system that was in Cthulhu Tech. And looking back on it, I was a little bit too nice on that dice system myself. But the bottom line is you will find more often games that utilize a core die mechanic. And I'll usually be pretty upfront about what that core mechanic is within the first few pages. In, say, Exalted, it's going to be, well, the Storyteller system. In D&D, of course, the D20 system. In something like Eclipse Phase, they're going to be using a D100 setup. Same with Warhammer. Well, except for Warhammer 3rd Edition. Um, in Genesis, it's going to be using what they refer to as the Narrative Dice system that a lot of people seem to dislike, except for me. In something, in something like, say, um, Tibet, it's going to be using organic rule components. And while the naming might be cute at times, the purpose of it, to me, is a case of, this is going to be the core. This is going to be your friend. To quote Full... It's kind of like the rifle in Full Metal Jacket. While the idea of separate subsystem-based mechanic design is certainly a thing, it hasn't been completely excised, it's something that you're not going to find as much. And to be honest, I think it's something that only really works in very specific situations, or, or if you're just trying to do old school stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs>